back to the channel everybody hope you're doing good background change yet again this one also from texas 2k this is probably one of my favorite cars that we took we took cars that made more power but this this is a really cool story this is brandon's sti makes over a thousand horsepower on methanol dry sump uh, dog box it has all the bells and whistles a 7675 from precision great car great guy great team that he brought from montana with him it was a couple years ago not as fortunate it had a money shift and so he spent the last two years putting it back together and it was personal best after personal best and finished with an 880 and even though he he lost that particular race it was still an 880, so he was stoked. And just how clean the car is, it's still mostly full weight. It is on some 26, uh, 950, 16 Hoosiers so that it can run some big brakes. Um, but because it's on methanol, that brings up a subject that we've kind of brushed over a little bit, but I've been asked about, and then that's fuel trims per cylinder and EGT per cylinder. Now it's pretty common in the diesel world to have EGT globally, in cars globally, maybe on just one cylinder. But when we switch to some of the more exotic fuels where tuning is very critical for fueling, i.e. methanol, we normally will run individual EGT. We don't use timing as a parameter for the EGT, we're using fuel only. Timing can be a two-edged sword. You can add timing till the EGT drops and then break a motor. So we don't do that. But what we're going to talk about is adding fuel to keep a car happy. And while this is an example of a car that is on methanol, we're not going to look at its logs specifically. We're actually going to kind of go back in time a little bit. We're going to look at Jeff Bush's Mitsubishi Eclipse so that you can see kind of the relationship between what you have to do to get EGT under control. Um, I'm not going to show what it was before, but I'll show you what we were adding per cylinder. Kind of give you an idea. So let's switch to the AEM software. We're going to start with AEM data. We're going to look at some of the data acquisition software. So you can see here at this point, Jeff's car is in third gear. 73 pounds of boost, 9,600 RPM, 15 degrees of timing, which on that car, that was pretty common. Um, we already kind of covered that earlier in the how to tune for infinity boost video. Air fuel is an 890. It was on M5, so we run M5 mixed methanol richer than we would M1. You can see that we're 60% duty cycle. Unfortunately, the vehicle speed's not accurate. This car was going a lot faster than 152 at this point. But now if you look at the bottom, right down here, we have EGT. We have 1058, 1085, 1049, 1040. So methanol, methanol we run a lot richer and while we tend to use a gas scale for quick reference, that 8.9 to 1 air fuel is down 0 0.60 lambda, uh, 0.59 possibly. I'd have to do the math real fast. But that aside, you can see that the exhaust gas temperature is very low. Ethanol at the same point might be 1400. Gasoline will be 16, 1650. So... One thing, in order to keep the, the car from melting a motor out, we keep it very rich, keeps it happy. Best power is between 1050 and 1250, courtesy of most domestic guys. We can run a little bit hotter on M1. We try not to on the M5 because of the components in the fuel. But you can see it's fairly balanced. Number two is a little hot. I'm not quite sure if at this point it was injector flow that we were dealing with, or if it was related to intake manifold dynamics. We kind of had a lot going on at various times trying to figure out why the car was doing what it was doing. 
this was a fresh setup uh, this would have been Texas 2k so we switch real fast to the AM software there's the fuel trim on number two we had to add 18 percent to keep that one happy as I recall I think we just needed to have the injectors clean because it hadn't gotten pickled and they were a little corroded but it shows you that using fuel trims to balance the EGT independent of total flow you can bring EGT under control and in this case not destroy a motor now there are some cars that allow you to do this one would be the Mitsubishi Evolution 10 which the software is opening up here really quick and I'm not going to explain how I know what the numbers mean but when we open up a map here some stock ECUs uh, Evos are one uh, I believe most Subarus we have cylinder fuel trim so when we look if I can click on it this table is zeroed out it shows 100 everywhere that means zero added so we might have to come in and here do something like this set the values higher to get fueling on that cylinder more accurate maybe in this case cylinder two wants to run a little lean Typically, it's one and four. But you might notice as you're tuning that it's not always the same amount per cylinder, per boost, or versus RPM. So when we swing that around, you can see that in this example, maybe this car needed to have a lot more fuel added in number two, the entire pull. Where number four only needed it right around peak torque, right as the turbo was starting to light off. That's an example. You might encounter completely different circumstances. Cars that have good flow through the intake manifold, it's even. Maybe you're using a Lehman style rally intake manifold or ITBs. Your cylinder balance is going to be really good. Perhaps you're using a stock intake manifold where the OE has made a lot of compromises for space for tuning they're going to run the car really really rich as we've covered before these cars the evo 10 stock runs a 950 960 air fuel um, wide open throttle up top for various reasons but it would cover over a lot of issues that you might encounter because of cylinder misbalance so do you need to run individual egt's Probably not for most applications, but anytime you're really going to push the envelope, maybe you as a tuner, you don't have the experience, or maybe your combination just really does require it. In the example, you, we've been using methanol. Individual EGT will go a long way. Buying a K-type thermocouple isn't very expensive. Getting the converter and the amp and all that stuff, that can add up. But in the end, it's still cheaper than putting a motor in the car having to pull the head because you burn a valve or, you know, obviously put a hole in a piston, something antisocial, as I like to say. So it's all about insurance. It's all about your comfort tuning the car. In the Evo 10s, as an example, the stock intake manifold is pretty balanced, but I've been able to definitely pick up power by tuning. So we're going to fast forward to an example of that and see how improving the air fuel balance per cylinder, which also does affect it globally, but the balance per cylinder affects power. So here we have an example of an Evo 10 that right where we're looking, the AFR change isn't too radical, 1148 to an 1110. You can see that it is up about 
seven horsepower. If we back up here a little bit, we have an example of 1152 to an 110. Again, still up in horsepower, about six horsepower. But this was from cylinder balancing, which did affect the global AFR. But at the same time, we didn't lose power. We hopefully added some reliability. This particular car was a road race car. It had a larger turbo. It was an Evo 10 with the SST with the Mitsubishi's version of the DCT uh, automatic transmission. So all in all, balancing cylinders won't always add power, but the dream is that we're adding reliability by fixing some of the inherent design flaws in factory equipment. Whether it's a cylinder head, intake manifold, throttle body placement, there's a few things that can cause issues. And it's interesting that while I couldn't find an example, just running the car globally richer will lose power. Because it's not that it wants to be richer everywhere. Certain cylinders only want to be rich at certain times, at least in the case of the 4B11. So take that information. Hopefully you find a dyno, find the sensor equipment that you need to test this and see what your platform likes. And this is information that you like, you think somebody else that you know might like. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Press the like button. Right next to the subscribe button is the bell. You can receive automatic notifications that new content has been uploaded. We look forward to talking to you guys again. Take care.